Summer's tensions because at a national level, all of Belgium rallies, whether Kim, Kleist, whether Kim Kleisters wins the US Open or Herman van Rompuy becomes the president of, of Europe, everyone in Belgium rallies. So that's, that's not a difficult problem. It is not a coalition problem. You want to see division, go watch Fox News in my country. This is easy. It is not an opposition and a majority problem. But it is the fundamental um, confidence that the government has right now, which was different even than under Van Rompuy. Um, even there, there was beginning to be um, a confidence and a consistency that they could begin to step up and take the lead in Europe. And I could have a dialogue there that, with no fault to Eva Term, who uh, I regard as a friend and a, a, a very good person, he's not in the position now to do it. Stephen Van Acker is not in the position now to do that. They're a new and uncertain government. But that creates uncertainty. Um, where that is all going to shake out, now, let me give you one example of the uncertainty. And I don't want to uh, take too much time because I do want to get to some of the economic uh, thoughts I have. But for example, um, and please let me know if I have a little time problem, knowing that, that Prime Minister Wittem and, and uh, Foreign Minister Van Acre had limits on how much they could do, um, and knowing that we have the London conference coming up in tomorrow to consider who should contribute what in Afghanistan. Um, at our embassy, we decided to kind of go out in front on that issue. And so I have been very public the last week and a half to two weeks, uh, first in the papers, suggesting that Belgium and the United States completely agree on civilian reconstruction. The message of civilian reconstruction as a way to deal with Afghanistan was not well played in the media here. That is the Obama message. And to get to increased military support, all you have to realize is you can't have civilian reconstruction uh, unless you make the people secure. You can't plant agriculture. You can't build uh, educators and trainers and police trainers unless it's secure. Belgium happened to learn that well in Haiti. They quickly were the moral leader. They sent the BFAST team down there. They sent doctors and people to do civil engineering. Um, but they only sent three people with pistols as security. I got a call the first Saturday they were down there. The BFAST team could not operate. They were at the UN compound, and even there, there were, there were threats to their fundamental security. I called down to our Haiti Crisis Center. They got Southern Command, and we provide the security for the BFAS team. So fundamentally, that's not a hard message to sell in Belgium. That if you're going to do civil reconstruction, you've got to provide security. You've just got to get the message out there. And so we talked to the papers. I appeared on the Farah show. Um, I went and met with people that everyone said, oh, you'll never convince. So I met with Minister Flau, and I met with Mr. Van der Link, and I, and I met with Mr. Van der Maal, and, and I met with Mr. Derupo, and, and I had no opposition. Fundamentally, people in Belgium believe in civil reconstruction in Afghanistan. Fundamentally, people believe that you shouldn't be in, that, that civil reconstruction needs security. Um, but yet, whether I've been able to convince uh, the leaders in the government that Belgium can step up and do this now uh, seems to be uh, where the questions are out there. And so with that, I'm not sure with the new Belgian government um, how much they can actually take the steps economically uh, of change, even though the table is set for a leadership vacuum that Belgium could clearly fill. Um, but um, let me turn briefly then, or not as briefly, to the sort of economic recovery issues and what they tell any businessman in Belgium. Um, First, the word crisis. I think that's largely a word of politicians and journalists. Um, because for lots of people, whether it's in Belgium or Newark um, or Pittsburgh, um, the crisis was not something that occurred because the subprime mortgage happened to get out of hand and then caused the banking system to topple um, behind five uh, evil-spirited bankers. The, the roots of the crisis, in fact, the ramifications of the crisis had existed long ago. They had existed in Detroit. And so what happened to GM was not a crisis. It would, the, that crisis existed if you saw Detroit long ago. What happens at the InBev plant is not a crisis. It existed long ago if you were ever in Pittsburgh. Um, so fundamentally, industrial-based economies on old labor management systems were failing. 
Uh, it's now moved forward um, with an impetus on the, on the banking crisis as well. But those industries for which the fundamentals would have been fine, you don't see a great crisis at Google or Microsoft. Uh, you don't see a crisis in, in Silicon Valley. Um, the world had changed. It was just the perception of fundamental industries had not changed. And then when they fail, which isn't that difficult to predict, it's then attributed to a crisis almost as an excuse for saying if we can only fix whatever this crisis was, find the Band-Aid, it will get better. Um, what clearly is in front of us right now, it is broken so we can fix it. That's good news because we can do it better. But we have to do it smarter. And what it does, I think, for most is it creates opportunity, generally economic opportunity, but uniquely for Belgium, economic and social opportunity. Um, because people understand how to do it better. How to do it better is going to depend on biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, clean energy, technology, agribusiness. There is no question that in a high-priced labor market, whether the US or Belgium, trying to struggle on an industrial production is going to fail. But it doesn't need to succeed for those countries to succeed. And so, but what you've got to do is you've got to take, um, uh, you've got to resort to those areas that play to your strengths, that play to an educated workforce, that play to um, all, the, all the advantages that Scott said exist. So if you were looking at a country like Belgium or the United States, you would say you ought to be in biotechnology and pharmaceuticals and agrobiofoods and clean energy and high tech. Um, Microsoft should be here and Hewlett Packard should be here and, uh, and IBM should be here and Google should be here. And what's interesting is they've come. They've come in the last two years. And what's particularly interesting for me is they've come generally to Mons. And so if you're thinking as I am on how an economic revolution saves the United States through the 80s by a technology revolution and how clearly a green energy uh, investment is going to be what is our next boom, and I can tell those places, whether it's Boston, the recovery of Pittsburgh, um, or Silicon Valley or Northern Virginia, the area near where I'm from, you can see it happening. You can know who are the smart people to get there. And you look at the Belgian map, you say there are good days both economically and economically as an engine for social, uh, for social change. And not because of any judgment politically what Belgium should look like. But economically it makes sense because if you're going to get Microsoft here, Microsoft would like to be lots of places. And so uh, if you are, uh, whether you're Chris Paters or Rudy DeMott or Charles Piquet and you're dealing fundamentally with record un re unemployment for your area, no matter what the absolute numbers are, you've got the same goal in mind, which is I'd like some of those Microsoft jobs. It doesn't have to be a US company, Microsoft, but it's going to be a biotech job and a high technology job and an agribusiness job. Um, and when they come, they come and they, they dominate a region. Belgium, for me, is the easiest sell as an ambassador for investment and the toughest sell. It's the easiest sell because I look at every CEO and say, why would you possibly invest a dollar in France, Germany, England, or the Netherlands when you could invest a quarter of that in Belgium and get all four? You can get a better educated, equally multilingual for all of them work, uh, workforce. Um, you can get a more educated workforce, and you can get just as ease as access. Um, I use always for my example our Nike distribution, the Nike distribution plant in Belgium. The Nike distribution plant is a story that if you can get out, every, every business in the, country, in the world should come to Belgium. It is cheaper economically and um, cheaper ecologically for Nike to produce all of their products in the Far East and even if they are destined for distribution to stores in the Far East, even if they're destined for stores in Eastern Russia, it is cheaper and ecologically less of a carbon footprint to put those products that are produced in the Far East on barges through the Suez Canal, bring them to Antwerp, send them down the river, build your distribution plant 100 meters um, from the river, have 100 meters of carbon fuels into a warehouse, repackage them, put them on containers, put the containers on rail tracks that are 100 meters from your door, 
send those rails all over Europe and then the carbon footprint from the end of the rail line to the store.